What's going on, everybody? I want to welcome you back to another Real Talk video. I pray you are still having a wonderful, blessed weekend as we thank the most time for so much. My title now says, Stop Trying to Change the World. Christians, stop trying to change the world. Now, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait before you get mad at my title or cut the video off. Just listen. Feel my heart with this one. Just, just listen. Don't be so quick to get mad because this title says stop trying to change the world. Because so many times, so many people tell me, JT, we got to change the world. Man, it's up to us to change the world. You know, we the light of the world, like the Bible says. We got to change the world. If we don't change the world, who else will? Now, just think about that alone. That sounds good. Mm, teach Holy Spirit. I commend that people want to change the world. But then the change is going to come. It got to start with self. And I mean this with no disrespect. When have you ever read in the scriptures where the Most High said, change this world? Mm. Or even better yet, when you read about Christ or Yahshua in ministry, did he really truly try to change this world? Did he tell his disciples to change this world? Mm. To truly, truly understand this video, you got to understand that there are two different systems. As my big brother PP John has been preaching about for years on here, you got you got the world system of Satan, and then you have the system of the Most High. These two systems, you'll see the difference, because one is righteous, which is Yahweh, and the other one, any and everything goes on. You cannot serve two masters. You cannot serve the most high and mammon, money. This world system that we live in paints a picture of everything being fast, materialistic, money, power, money on top of money. Ego, pride, selfishness, etc., etc. But when you look at the difference of these systems, they can't go with each other. John chapter 2, 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 through 17, it teaches us don't love this world or anything in it. Whoever does the love of the Father is not in them. He also teaches us in his word that you are an enemy of God if you love this system. Book of John says Satan is the God of this world. He is the prince of the power of the earth. That's why I'm doing like that. I'm not talking about Yah. I'm talking about the prince of the power of the earth right now with what I just said. Who has blinded the minds of the unbelievers. Who flows through all kind of forms of communication. Cell towers, cell phones, internet, satellites, movies, video games, etc., etc. See, it is so important to, to understand what our Savior said. He said, my kingdom, teach Holy Spirit, is not of this world. Matthew chapter 4, the Bible shows you that, that, that the devil tried to take him on the high mountains. Told our Savior to throw yourself down. Mm. 
He wanted our Savior to worship him. He wanted all the glory. Christ said that man does not live off of bread alone, but every word that comes out of the mouth of the Father. Mm. But see, it's all a part of our Heavenly Father's plan. Satan cannot do nothing unless the Most High allows it. Teach Holy Spirit. But he showed us that my kingdom, Sister Tanisha, it, it is not of this world. So if the one you say you following said that this his kingdom was not of this world, why are you trying to follow this world? Why are you trying to save a world that's already doomed? A world that's prophesied in the Bible to already be over and done with? A world that is pretty much going to, to the lake of fire? But when he said, my kingdom is not of this world, because if it was, my service would fight so that I should not be delivered to the Jews, but my kingdom is not from here. Because Christ already knew that it was a system already set up for us to live by. Teach Holy Spirit. We need another president. We need another black president. We need another black leader. We need another black this, black that, black that. No, you don't. See, if you go back Israel in the Old Testament, crying out for a king, never needed a king. All they ever needed was the most time. Mm. But when your focus is on this world, how can you see spiritually? Wait a minute, JT, but that sounds like a contradiction, what you're saying, because John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world, and he gave his only begotten Son, and whomsoever believe in him shall not perish, but out Everlasting life, JT, what are you talking about? He was talking about his own world. God don't love this. Oh, no. God hates wickedness. God hates abomination. God hates sin. And the wages of sin is death. Sin separates us from the Most High. Why do you think he was so mad at Adam? He gave it all to Adam. Put Adam in charge and Adam lost it. This is the satanic system from the calendar on down. John 3 and 16 is so mistaught. So mistaught. Because people read that and they think that he's talking about this world. No. That's why he has so many scriptures that teaches you to go against this world. Look at this wicked, corrupt government. God, Yahweh never commanded Christians to change this world. I know these songs sound good. We can change the world. That sounds good. But is it biblical? Did he say, Christians, your job is to change the world? Why would you try to change something that's already prophesies in scripture to be dead. Mm. Let me let me talk to my people for a moment. In my race, if most of us understood what I'm saying here, you wouldn't go call nobody and say we're going to go march again. The marching would be over. You wouldn't go get a, a permanent marker and go get no more signs Fitting out them signs to go protest, the protesting will be over. You wouldn't be all caught up in that Black Lives Matter that was founded by who, designed by who, that's got their own agenda. It ain't, it ain't got nothing to do with Black Lives Matter because all lives matter. If Black Lives Matter would learn what would, 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 was, was so important, then why so many Black Lives won't learn who Black is? And I don't even like to use the term black because that's not what we are. 
but I'm going to say it in this video so you'll know who I'm talking about. If it matters so much, stop killing each other. Stop robbing each other. Stop disrespecting each other. Stop going against each other. Stop trying to get equal with this system that is doomed. This system is demonic. Show you how much they care about you. Look at look at how many people lay it off because of this coronavirus. This pandemic. Your unemployment done ran out. And they're in the office arguing on just to even see if they're going to sign the, the bill to even just think about sending out another stimulus check when your license, it, it, them, them bills ain't stopped coming in. Look at how they do their own military, their own betterments, this world. This world system don't care about you. They don't care about us. But you still saying, JT, go vote so you can make a difference. You can't make a difference to a satanic system. Crooked politicians, rigged up elections, presidents all related to each other, presidents being selected and not elected. Yep, I said it again. Selected and not elected. But well, JT, they talking about they lost some old votes. No, they did. They know what they're doing. They play games with your life. Oh, teach all the spirit. They continue to promote fear and lies. How can you change this system? You can't. If we were going to try to make this system look so better, then why would I even be trying to get into eternal life? I ain't never seen Noah go around. <laughs> can, I, can, I, can I go to her brother Rodney? I ain't never seen Noah try to change this world. Matter of fact, Mota told Noah, get your family. Get out. Take these two by two. The rest is doomed. I ain't never seen Moses trying to change the world. David, no. Nope. Paul, no. Nope. Peter, none of them. Christ told us what was going to happen with this system. He told us what was going to happen to the churches. But don't nobody want to talk about apostasy falling away. Nobody want to open up the book of Jude. Don't nobody want to talk about Revelation, the letter to the seven churches. Don't nobody want to talk about repentance. Don't nobody want to talk about how Jude changed up his message when he said, I was eager to write to you about salvation, but instead, I want to write to you about contending in the faith because things had gotten so bad, so messed up, so wicked. He's encouraging us to continue in the faith because so many people have jumped out of the faith. Mm, let the church say amen. When did he tell us to change this world? I can't save no one. I can give you the tools, tell you what to read and study. I can pray for you, encourage you, love you, help you out all I can, but I can't save your soul. Because he said you got to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. God can call JT to save the world. I get emails all the time. People tell me, JT, I'm, I'm, I'm soul saving, brother. I'm out here, I'm out here saving souls, brother. I, I can't save your soul. I can't, I can't tell you that lie. But I can try to bring you to Christ. But once again, you got to fight for your own salvation. See, when you change. You automatically change from this world. That's how you go against this world. That's why you are hated. Remember John 15 verse 18. He said, if the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. How are you going to change a world that hated your Savior? 
even his own rejected him. This word killed our Savior. But he rose again. He conquered death. If you could change this world, once again, why would you be waiting on the afterlife? See, thank I thank the most tired that 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 the way was provided for salvation on that cross. But what would happen if most people would start changing themselves? I got something for the young people as I wrap this video up. Please, young people, listen up. Especially to the rappers, the thugs, and the gangsters. The ones who always think that what they see on the screen is what it's all about. But they don't see what's, what's behind the scenes. They think it's all about the bling, the Rolex watches, and, and, and the jewelry, and the cars, and the women, and, and et cetera, et cetera. The houses, and, and all the money, material things. But let me tell you something, young people. On May the 21st, 1972, there was a young man born by the name of Christopher George Latour Wallace, one of the greatest rappers. You know him as Biggie, Biggie Smalls, the total split. But he only lived to March 9, 1997, is when he took his last breath. But he was a very, very powerful young man. Powerful lyrics. He would say things like, damn right, I like the life I live because I went from negative to positive. But look at how he grew up. Look at what he was surrounded by. Look how he was introduced to the game, dope game. But then he realized he had a gift mm. that could take him from those streets. Damn right, I like the life I live because I went from negative to positive. But he also said if the game shakes me or breaks me, I hope that it makes me a better man. Mm. Remember when he was talking to Puff Daddy, he said we can't change the world unless we change ourselves. Think about that. But you can't change the world. Even when you change yourself, this world is still going to operate the same way. Or did Puff Daddy tell him that? We can't change the world unless we change ourselves. One of them said it, but I'm just using them for an example. But then it was, a, it, it was also another young man who was born on June the 16th, Titus Taylor, 1971. And he lived to September the 13th, 1996. Oh, I remember this world was so messed up when he passed away. None other than an all-time great, Tupac Shakur. These men really died young. But these men also predicted their own death. Just listen at their lyrics. I didn't mean to take it, take it here in this video, but let me let it roll. Tupac always said he wouldn't live long. But Tupac said everybody is at war with different things. I'm at war with my own heart. Hmm. Everybody is at war with different things. But I'm at war with my own heart. How many times have I told you your biggest enemy could be yourself? Pac said, we can never go nowhere unless we share with each other. Mm. Pac said, do everything you can to make it around the system, over the system, or out the system. He hated this system. But one of my favorite quotes and in his lyrics that Pac said was, I'm not saying I'm going to change the world, but I guarantee that I will spark the brain that will change the world. 
But see, but when you look at these two young men, I wanted to use Pac and Biggie because back in the 90s, they was like the most popular ones. East Coast, West Coast, you know what I'm saying? Y'all know how it was. But the world loved them. Hmm. The world worshipped them. And I mean this out of love. I love Tupac and Biggie, but I never did worship them. I would give them a hand clap. One of my favorite songs by Pac is Dear Mama. Changes. Wake up in the morning and I ask myself, is life worth living? I should have blast myself. Listen to them lyrics. I wake up in the morning and I ask myself, is life worth living? I should have blast myself. That's suicidal. But he kept it real. See, when they started realizing that what they was in, it wasn't all that cracked up to be like they thought it was, they wanted out. Tupac cried out and wanted out more and more. Whitney Houston cried out. Michael Jackson cried out. But there were some demons that had them held down. Their life ended. One thing about the game. It's got to end it. The world loved him. And that's why Pac would talk about them demons. He had so many nightmares. Because that's what had a hold of him. When you're in that lifestyle, partying, getting drunk, getting high, your mind, you are easily influenced by this world. Most of these rappers, actors, entertainers wanted out of the game, and the game took them out. Tupac's mother told him they would use him against his own self to destroy him. He was powerful. Pac was very smart. Martin Luther King had a dream. I have a dream. And he also said he would never live to be 40 years old. Martin Luther King died at 39 years old. Malcolm X said, they gonna kill me soon. Martin Luther King was assassinated three years after Malcolm X's death. Look at how many black leaders was assassinated, murdered. Well, JT, the NAACP, no. NAACP was founded by white people. What do you think NAACP was all about? What do you think civil rights was really all about? Why do you think they gave us Black History Month? It was all a setup from the beginning. Why do you think they stole our identity? Why did they teach us white history, which is his story? Not my story, but his story. Why were we lied to so much? Why didn't they want us to know how to read? Why did they lynch us? Why did they hate us? Why did they call us nasty trash and monkeys and, and, and all that kind of stuff? But Master slept with the black woman. Mm. She wasn't too ugly, was she? Why did so many black women end up raising white people's children? I didn't mean to go there in this video, but I'm taking it there. Why was there a house, nigga? Why was there a field, nigga? Mm. Why were we brainwashed? Why, till this day, most of us still don't want to change or don't even want to know who we are? I don't see no change. 
Let me let me pick it back off to Tupac again. Pac said, I still see no changes. All I see is racist faces. Misplaced hate makes disgrace to racists. Think about that alone. Racism ain't never left. Stereotyping ain't never left. I still see no changes. All I see is racist faces. Misplaced hate makes disgrace to racists. He said, we got to make a change. It's time for us as people to start making some changes. Change the way we eat, the way we live, the way we treat each other. Then with some great lyrics. But here's the number one question. Out of love. How many of us have made that change? Did Pac make those changes or did Pac just say it to sound good? Because Pac reached out to a lot of people. Just the question. We still kidding each other, fighting each other, degrading our women, cussing each other out, getting killed over stupid stuff, hating each other. Hardly even want to support each other. As I close, it's, it's way too much we need to do ourselves than to be worried about this whole world. Sam Cook said a change gonna come. My people still singing, we shall overcome someday. With no disrespect, I ain't never cared for that song. I hate that song. Because my point is, what are you trying to overcome in this system? I overcame. I overcame me. And when I overcame me, I was free. And all the way I overcame me was through the power of the Holy Spirit. I don't want to hear we shall overcome. I don't overcame. My biggest enemy was myself. That's why I have a peace of mind now. And I overcame by not being focused on this world. I know this message is a little rough. But if you love it, give me a thumbs up. If you hate it, give me a thumbs down. Because this, this is one of these messages where I, I don't expect too many people to, to agree with it just because the title alone. But if you understand what I'm saying, it was never meant for us to try to save this entire world. Christ said, I'm coming back for the lost sheep. Or did Christ say, I'm coming back for this world? Christ said, few that be that find it. Peter said, if the righteous is scarcely saved, then who can be saved? What did that say for the sinner? Time is ticking. Which side will you choose? Shalom.